In, in past seminars at this stage, I was giving a rather long speech uh, describing the success of the school, the number of students, uh, the number of experiments, and so on and so forth. This year, I want to skip most of this and, and not to talk much about this kind of issue. I've only selected uh, one slide and then I will switch to something in which part of the story will come out. The slide I put there uh, is, uh, we, we may call it as we were or something like that. This was uh, one of the seminars, uh, was the seminar of 2005. We were in the Volta, uh, in the room of Alessandro Volta in the university. And I think that a few people here, I see that uh, Alessio Rupoi is showing it to his brother that he is there, but also other people that you know, Alessandro Reali, and there is someone who is defending uh, her thesis. Uh, maybe you have seen her this morning. She was, uh, she was speaking from that table there. And you see, you see that, well, the names I, are those that I recognize in the photos. There are someone, that I'm not sure who they are. Uh, the, first, uh, the first head to the, to the right, I'm not sure. Uh, and, and maybe uh, maybe there is someone that is not so clear in the photos. Uh, the first head here is, is, is Nigel. But you see, actually, you don't see the entire photos. In the, oh, maybe. In that screen, I do not see. For example, do you see Reggie de Troches? Yeah, okay, you see. You see. So you see, people that is now Dean, right? Is, is, uh, is Dean somewhere in Texas? No. Where, where is Reggie? So, see. Uh, this, this is uh, uh, a graduation, one of the first graduation of our PhD students 15 years ago. There were six students. Yesterday, we had uh, six defense of, of PhD thesis. This morning we had uh, six alumni presenting uh, uh, some of their recent work. I think that we all faculty this morning decided that they are promoted again. Uh, there was some reservation by Rui, but, uh, but anyway, uh, again, and, and next year we will continue with this. The, between this 2005 and today, uh, I, I, I'll pass again a video that has been shown already yesterday, but I think it's worthwhile. It's, uh, it's something like this, which is uh, what uh, we, we showed uh, on... Uh, I hope. Yes? This is a uh, new testing rig that we inaugurated uh, uh, actually the day before yesterday which is a nine degrees of freedom uh, system uh, with a lower table, which is controlled independently from the upper table and on the three, on the three horizontal degrees of freedom, while, depends on, uh, while the upper table depends on the lower table for what concerns the vertical ground motion. And this, uh, this kind of excitation was the last one, I'm passing only that one, was 90% uh, uh, of the signal recorded at eight kilometers from the epicenter of the 2017 earthquake in central Italy. So it was approximately the ground motion originated by a 6.5 magnitude at eight kilometers. And in this, in this, uh, in this uh, experiment that you see there, there are just normal, uh, no structure elements. And therefore you see what would happen for an earthquake, which is strong, but it's not something which is you know, completely outside of our, of our expectation and so on and so forth. And we may have the structure that respects all the capacity design principles that Mike was showing and so on and so forth. And we will have a structure that maybe will not collapse, but maybe even people could be killed by the non-structure elements. And, and certainly this, this, the building will not be usable and certainly there will be a lot of economical losses. So I don't know where Domenico is now, but uh, well, or, or Helen, okay, you're there. And, and these kind of issues maybe are also part of what you should consider as a future challenge in, in, in insurance problems. Now, uh, I, I'm saying that instead of telling you a story of the school, I will go directly to one of the central issues of today. Uh, this, the central, issues of, the central issue of today is the, what we have uh, renamed uh, the Nigel Priestley Prize uh, after, after uh, Nigel passed away in 2014. So, uh, very briefly, I'll go through uh, our recent history, just going uh, 
backward on, on the previous, on the previous uh, awards. And I'll start from, uh, from uh, the uh, 2018, because it was the last one that we were able to, uh, to award, because then we, we essentially we closed the seminar because of the COVID. And uh, this was the sixth edition, and it was uh, Anil Chopra who got it. Uh, there was a, a sculpture where there was somehow a book which was uh, uh, prevented from collapsing through, through a pencil, through a big pencil. Uh, before uh, Anil, you may remember, uh, some of you may remember Steve Kramer, who got the 2016 uh, uh, prize. Uh, Steve had been also with us several times teaching here, and uh, the prize was, was, was actually a painting by, by an artist uh, that is there, yes, is indicated as Louise, and you don't recognize uh, her last name, but she's actually the wife of André Filiatro, who is, who is, a, who is a painter. And uh, two, uh, two years earlier, uh, two years earlier, uh, it was, uh, Actually, it was four years earlier. I, don't, I am skipping one because I don't want to talk about 2014. So 2012 is, uh, is uh, well, it was Luis Esteva, and you see, and you see Luis in these photographs. And again, going backward, in 2010 was uh, um, Big Bertero. He was uh, already quite old, and he was not able to come here. So for this reason, uh, there was one of our colleagues here, Chiara Casarotti, I'm not sure whether she's here or not, but she went to, uh, to Berkeley and she interviewed Vilbertero uh, with a long interview. And I'm not passing the entire interview, let me see. I received many. It's just awards. one minute. But the best award for me is to see that the students that work with me are doing very good. <laughs> This is something that really I feel proud to see my student and Michael has done a tremendous job building this rose school. Okay. Uh, and the first edition, 2008, was Nigel, and uh, of course at that time the name was not Nigel Christie, it was just the Rose Prize. And uh, also uh, about Nigel, uh, I want to pass that. The with the Rose School since its inception in 2000. In fact, even earlier than that, since Professor Calvi and I spent a lot of time discussing the format and mechanics of this rather unusual uh, school. This association with the Rose School has been the most enjoyable part of my technical career. I feel cheated that this association has to terminate. Okay, of course it has to terminate, and he was not here because he passed away six months later. And through, I'm, I've gone backward, and now I, I jump to today. And I jump today because we are going to award the, I think we will call it the 2022, because uh, well, the, the in-between has, has gone. And now, unfortunately, uh, not all of you will recognize the, uh, the person who is going to get this award because this person is uh, in, this, uh, in this photograph. And uh, you, have to, uh, you have to guess who is uh, the person who got uh, this, this prize. Actually, this is a photograph taken in 1988 at the, at the work of First of Engineering in Tokyo. And, uh, okay, maybe all of you have recognized him. Uh, in the next photographs will become much clearer. Uh, so uh, Greg Fembes is the is the awardee of uh, of the uh, Nigel Priestley seminar of this year. Uh, I will not remain, well, remind you all all his uh, success. Just you know that he has been the key person in developing Open Seas. You know that he has been teaching at Berkeley for many years. Uh, he then became dean at uh, well uh, pre before uh, well, became the department chair at Berkeley and then Dean, and then he moved to be president of the, of the university. No, actually, provost first, and then, and then president at the University of Texas at Austin, and, and then recently uh, he moved to be president of the uh, Emory University in Atlanta, and uh, uh, the commission was in charge 
of uh, deciding who is going to get the prize uh, as a, in some motivation. Greg, maybe you don't know, but next time, according to the rules, uh, you will be part of the commission too for the next time. This is the way to be sure that we make a good selection because you will not like to have someone of lost stature that gets the prize that you have got uh, two, years, two years earlier and, and recognizes uh, all this merit and, and all the uh, important uh, imprinting on, on young people that, uh, um, that Craig has been able to uh, fulfill in his, uh, in his long career. Now about the price, uh, Greg, uh, if you don't mind, you can come up here and see what's uh, under this, uh, this, uh, um, purple, uh, uh, this purple sheet there. This is a sculpture uh, of uh, a well-known Italian artist uh, who passed away um, seven years ago. It's, uh, it's a sculpture in bronze, and as it happens with good art, probably all people will, will see, will read something different. Uh, the artist, uh, we believe, was uh, reading it in terms of the interaction between uh, a human figure and, and the wall. Uh, when I saw it, I immediately thought about uh, an earthquake and, uh, and, uh, and about the fact that this world maybe was not something that was helpful with this man, but it was falling on him. But when I asked other people, other people were seeing, uh, uh, seeing different things. So we hope that this will, uh, will accompany you and maybe from time to time will make you thinking uh, about uh, our, our evolution, our, our responsibility in terms of uh, uh, reducing uh, risk for, for the society. Now, uh, Greg is going to give a, a very long talk, and uh, it's, uh, no, it's, it will not be so long. But anyway, uh, you will uh, actually, I've been a little bit pushing in this, but, uh, but he reacted very positively. I asked him, why don't you tell our students how comes that you, uh, being a student in the early 80s in Berkeley, end up being the president of a big American university? Maybe we'll, we'll also something to learn out of this speech. Okay.